Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending our weekly briefing. This week, we have our usual update from public health, and we're also joined by Norm Davis, the director of our Department of Civil Rights, and then I have a number of updates as well. So we will start with public health, as we usually do, and I'll welcome Janelle Heinrich, the director of public health, Madison Dane County, to the podium. Good morning. While I wish I was here today to share some different news, I am again here to share with you concerning COVID-19 trends in our community. As I said earlier this week, on September 9th, the spike in cases resulted in 487 people being diagnosed with COVID in one day in Dane County. At that time, that was a shock to our reality. Unfortunately, this is now our new normal. As of today, 23,760 individuals have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in Dane County since February. We continue to see increased sustained growth in new COVID-19 infections throughout our community. 3,238 people have been diagnosed with COVID-19 since last week. In the past month, <clears throat> excuse me, our community has experienced almost as many individuals being diagnosed with COVID as all the diagnoses combined for the first eight months of this pandemic. That's 10,828 neighbors, family, and friends diagnosed with COVID in the past month. This is equivalent to the population of the village of Oregon. Our 14-day average is 439 cases per day. This is up from 374.6 from last week. A month ago, our 14-day average was 167. This is one, a 163% increase. And our seven-day average is 483, up from 414 last week. Right now, there are 179 people hospitalized in, with COVID in Dane County and we are seeing hospitalizations in nearly every age group. Yesterday, Emergency Order 10 went to an, into effect, which prohibits indoor gatherings and limits outdoor gatherings to 10 people or fewer. This means that you should not meet up with anyone outside of your household, friends, family, coworkers, or teammates in any indoor space. There have been many questions asked about what we mean by gathering. This includes not socializing with even one other person you don't live with in an indoor setting. It also includes things like in-person games, sports, competitions, group exercise classes, meetings, trainings, moving, movies, events, and conferences. Please check out our website for more clarification in our FAQ section. We are taking this strict measure ahead of Thanksgiving, and it is in effect until December 16th. We will be revisiting this, this order and the data as we always do as we approach that date to determine what comes next and how do we support our behaviors with policies. We understand that this is difficult, but these are the things that we need to do right now so we can return to normal sooner rather than later. Right now, we all need to stop gathering, even in small groups. A quarter of people that we um, interview and who have tested positive indicated that they intended a gathering in the past two weeks. And we know that this is probably underrepresented. According to a University of Georgia Tech uh, risk assessment calculator that I've been mentioning, at as of today, a gathering of 10 people in Dane County has a 34% chance that at least one COVID positive individual will be present and it increases to 46% for a group size of 15. And outside of Dane County, these chances are even higher. This Thanksgiving and, and this holiday season, whatever you celebrate, please do not attend or host gatherings with people you don't live with. It simply isn't safe to gather with people you don't live with. In years past, many of us have had 15 or more people gather for a Thanksgiving meal. This year, it's nearly a coin flip. 
whether at least one person there will have COVID. No one should feel comfortable with those odds. In neighboring counties, as I said, this risk is more elevated. Have conversations now with your family and friends to let them know you won't be attending in person. These can be difficult conversations, but they're necessary to prevent the spread of virus. Please consider alternate ways to celebrate this holiday season, including virtual or taking a hike outside and sharing food or gifts via delivery or no contact drop off. Please support your local businesses. With the exception of Thanksgiving Day, the Alliant Energy Center COVID test site and flu clinic will be open next week. Please remember that Tuesdays at the beginning of the day, the wait is long, so plan your visit accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Next, we'll hear from Norm Davis, who's the director of our Department of Civil Rights. Good morning. I'm Norman Davis, the director of the City of Madison Department of Civil Rights. And it's my um, pleasure to share with you uh, the work that is uh, going on in the City of Madison to advance civil rights. And for this, I want to frame for you five things that you should know about your City of Madison Department of Civil Rights. The first is that we are here for you. Leadership in Madison has long recognized the impact and legacy of oppression and exclusion. And so first I want to acknowledge the leadership and sacrifice of those Madison leaders that have shaped the city that we live in. During 2020, we lost two pioneers uh, of Madison in the persons of Malele Chikasa Anana and Dr. John Yancey Odom. These two figures loom large in Madison and we owe them and their families a great debt of gratitude. I want to also uh, uh, give credit to the Department of Civil Rights staff, uh, the workers that uh, travail on a daily basis, helping to ensure that the rights of every visitor, every resident uh, of Madison is, are protected. To this end, uh, we seek to hold ourselves and others accountable through standards that we have developed over time. Those standards include ensuring that we are in touch with the community, that the community has uh, involvement in decision making around the civil rights policies and practices. We ensure that we are empathetic that we're transparent in our communications with the community. We hold ourselves accountable to standards, making sure that we use good data and professionalism in striving to eliminate racism and other uh, 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 things that tear down our community. We use principles. Our chief principle is that we vigorously pursue the protection of civil rights and potential for all. We see ourselves as part of the solution. We help to drive uh, the solution for complex issues that we face in Madison. And we also seek results. We know that this work really means nothing without tangible results that individuals in the community can feel. And then we come together and we celebrate the wins that we achieve in civil rights with the community. And so we celebrate through awards, uh, annual awards that are given, uh, and we celebrate other local and national legends, and we memorialize them through these annual awards. Through our Reverend James C. Wright Award, the first executive director of the Madison Equal Opportunities Commission. We celebrate through the Alex Olson Award, uh, through our Seeking Tolerance and Justice Over Hate initiative. And of course, we celebrate the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Humanitarian uh, Award uh, annually on Dr. King's birthday. The second thing that I want to 
let you know about your Department of Civil Rights is that we will take you seriously. We work collaboratively with other City of Madison officials, Dane County, the state of Wisconsin, and the federal government to ensure that your rights are protected. We're fighting back against structural and institutional racism at all levels, including legislation and other policies that would roll back progress that we have gained over decades. We also partner with community-based organizations to give uh, youth a government without walls, placing our services throughout the community to provide simplified and easier access with your trusted sources through our Certified Community Partners Program. Thirdly, I want to let you know that we offer free training to the Madison community. We partnered with Just Dane, with the Dane County Job Center, and other organizations to provide free training to employers, to job seekers, to individuals in the community that are simply interested in making sure that their rights are protected. In 2021, we are looking at uh, uh, including some fee-based training for more expansive uh, employers and other organizations uh, in our region. But we have counseled and advised dozens of colleagues in our region uh, on racial equity and social justice. We've even uh, counseled our, some of our nationwide partners uh, to help them understand how to develop uh, uh, agencies and offices of racial equity within their various jurisdictions. And I'm very, very proud to say that we will very soon announce the results of our recruitment for Madison's first equity and social justice manager. This uh, equity and social justice manager position will help us to continue this legacy of leadership in Madison. Fourthly, I want to let you know about some of the unique programs that our department offers in Madison. One, we have uh, a program that guarantees interviews for individuals that we refer for employment. And we have deputized various community-based organizations to uh, uh, refer many of their clients for employment, and those individuals are guaranteed interviews, which can often be the key factor in determining whether or not uh, someone is uh, eligible for hire. We also have uh, our Aspire program, which is our in, uh, annual internship program, targeting individuals engaged in college-level studies. Uh, we seek diverse candidates that can have the experience of working with any of our City of Madison agencies. Our agencies are often uh, made uh, much better through the participation of these students and through the projects that they're working on uh, for our agencies. We have also partnered with the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation to uh, co-found uh, the Upstart program, which is a program, it's a free program targeting uh, women and business owners of color in Dane County and providing them with world-class business training at no cost. This uh, Upstart program has uh, seen over 300 businesses uh, uh, developed and many of them thriving uh, today. And I'm excited to uh, announce uh, a recent partnership uh, where the city of Madison has um, sponsored five individuals to participate in the Associates in Commercial Real Estate program uh, that is uh, offered through uh, uh, in Milwaukee. And we're looking at uh, the option uh, of bringing that program here to Madison. This program uh, seeks to develop uh, uh, individuals in the community that are interested in commercial real estate uh, among diverse communities that can uh, impact the development market and improve economic equity in Madison. And the fifth thing that I want to share with you about the city of Madison's Department of Civil Rights <clears throat> is that we're committed to accessibility. We work uh, with downtown organizations and others to advance accessibility 
for people with disabilities. We take very seriously our obligation to ensure that uh, everyone in the community has meaningful access. And that includes uh, that you will have meaningful access regardless of the language that you speak. And so when you come to the city of Madison, you're fully entitled to the full array of services um, and we will accommodate your need for, um, for language access. So I want to thank you for your time in listening uh, to uh, the five things that you should know about your Department of Civil Rights. And please feel free to reach out to our department at any time uh, for any needs uh, that you have, whether it be related to uh, discrimination, harassment, accessibility, racial equity and social justice, uh, or, um, or any of the like. Thank you so much. Thank you, Norm. I have a few things that I want to go through, and then we'll see if we have time for questions. Uh, firstly, I just want to return um, to uh, some of the things that Janelle talked about in terms of the new orders. Um, I want you to know that we are taking extra precautions here in the city, um, even though uh, government is considered an essential service, um, we are reducing the number of people um, that are in the same room at any point in time. Um, city employees are very careful to be wearing masks, um, to be sanitizing, washing our hands, um, and staying as far apart as possible from each other so we minimize the risk. We do this obviously to keep ourselves safe, to keep each other safe, but also because we really want to emphasize for all of you and for every employer and workplace how important it is that we take these things seriously particularly right now. So I will again ask all of you as individuals to do the best that you can to keep yourself safe and your community safe, but also to ask all of the employers out there uh, to please make sure that you're instituting proper workplace safety guidelines to keep your employees safe and facilitating them having the correct PPE and maintaining the distance uh, that they need to maintain uh, and washing hands and sanitizing as necessary. This is incredibly serious. It's a difficult time for our community. And we're in a very dangerous phase of this pandemic um, and we really need everybody to be a part of this solution. And unfortunately, given the time of year that it is, that does mean that we all have to give up some of the normal traditions that we have. I've spoken before about my Thanksgiving traditions. And one more thing that I'll share is that when Amy and I host Thanksgiving, we're often joined by my mother and my sister and sometimes one of my brothers. This year, no one in my family is traveling. And my mother will stay in upstate New York. My sister will be in New York City. Um, because we know how dangerous it would be for us to potentially come together, particularly for my mother at her age. Um, she is in one of the higher risk groups. Um, so we're foregoing that in-person contact, um, the pleasure of having dinner together, spending time in each other's company, um, because we know that it's dangerous, it's risky, and I would much rather have my mother around next year um, to have Thanksgiving with her and to celebrate all the things we celebrate through the course of a year um, than take the risk of having her come and visit this Thanksgiving. So please think of yourselves, think of your family, make different plans to celebrate this year um, and do stay uh, only in touch with the folks that are right in your household in person and find other ways to be in touch with the rest of your friends and family this year. Um, another uh, hot topic these days is the recount that has been requested here in, in Dane County and in Milwaukee County. Um, the recount is happening. It is run by the county clerk, um, so uh, we don't have a major role uh, in running the recount, but I, I can share a few details that may be of interest. Um, 
First of all, I want to say that I have full confidence in our clerk's office, in our poll workers, in our election process. I know that we ran a safe, secure, and fair election here in Madison and throughout Dane County and, in, and through the entire state of Wisconsin. I don't expect the results to change with a recount, um, and I think everyone who has weighed in on this, uh, for the most part, does not expect the results to change substantially, particularly not here in Madison uh, or in Dane County where the margins were quite large. Um, nonetheless, it's uh, certainly within the rights of a campaign to request a recount. Um, and so we are hosting the recount at Monona Terrace. There will be a live stream available um, if people want to uh, view that. My understanding is that they're starting tomorrow morning. Um, and that, again, is run through the county clerk's office. So I refer any questions to the county clerk. But we do understand there will be a live stream available. Um, we are taking, um, as part of our normal protocols in Monona Terrace, um, pretty uh, substantial precautions um, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, there will be masks required in the building. Um, we, uh, the city clerk's office is loaning the county clerk our plexiglass barriers that we used at the polls so they can use them uh, in the recount room. Um, and my understanding is that they will be uh, marking off the six foot distance um, so that everybody who is working or observing in the room um, is aware of, of maintaining that distance uh, and keeping each other safe. Um, so again, uh, if people are interested, I'd invite you to connect with the county clerk um, and to uh, watch via live stream uh, if you do want to observe that process. Uh, another hot topic is, uh, as we move into the winter holidays, is um, how we are going to complete our winter holiday shopping um, if we are trying to avoid in-person contact with others. Um, I know that um, it is, folks are beginning to think about the holiday shopping season, and that's great. Certainly a time when we could all um, use a little pick-me-up uh, via a small gift from friends or family. Uh, but I encourage you to see seek out your favorite local businesses uh, online uh, or via phone and see if you can um, do the shopping that you might normally do in our small and local businesses here in Madison um, in a different way this year. Many, many of our local businesses have online options or have curbside pickup or delivery options. And I would really encourage you to uh, avail yourself of those this year um, rather than going to some of our the larger corporate options um, that don't have a stake in Madison. Um, every dollar that you spend on a local business circulates here in our local economy and helps your friends, your neighbors, our community more than the dollars that are spent on large corporations which simply fly out of our community and never come back. So please consider local businesses um, as you're shopping uh, for your Thanksgiving meal um, or whatever winter holiday you might be celebrating. A few other announcements to share. Um, uh, we've got... Um, to highlight a few things uh, in the budget. As you know, the budget uh, was passed by the Common Council, um, and it was a very challenging budget year, um, given the impacts of COVID-19 um, and the growing demand for community services. Um, we did provide uh, and pass a balanced budget um, that does invest in a number of things that are important for our community, including housing, homelessness, youth jobs, violence prevention, and an alternative crisis response team for behavioral health emergencies. I want to just take a moment to highlight some of the programs, um, particularly related to housing and community services that are in the budget. Um, on the topic of affordable housing, uh, we've continued to increase our investment in affordable housing um, to over six million annually, which is compared to just 4.5 million two years ago. 
Um, I want to thank, uh, in particular, uh, Alder Evers, um, who offered an amendment to increase that uh, funding uh, with support from many other alders. Um, we are also investing in programs that support home ownership, and uh, which is one of the, the important mechanisms for growing household wealth. And we're particularly focusing on strategies that increase home ownership rates for people of color, which in general lag behind uh, white households in terms of home ownership rates. We're also increasing resources available to low and moderate income families to make needed repairs or improvements in their homes um, and that allow senior homeowners to tap into the equity of their homes to help pay their property taxes. Uh, We're also inviting, currently we have an RFP out uh, for proposals for other innovative ways to add or preserve affordable housing options in Madison. And all told, these programs will invest over $50 million in the next six years. In the area of youth programming and community services, um, we're holding firm on our commitment to providing programming for youth and families. It's about $11 million in total. Uh, We've also increased specifically our funding for youth employment by about $100,000. And we're uh, committing to more than $2 million in support of our neighborhood and community centers. Um, and resources that benefit a wide range of -of out-of-school programming for young people um, and promote positive youth development. We're also increasing our funding for violence prevention efforts, uh, including creating a unit of violence prevention in public health Madison-Dane County um, and maintaining support for early childhood care services and tuition assistance for lower-income families. We also continue to fund programs that serve older adults. And I want to particularly shout out our senior center, which has done a great job of pivoting to offering uh, virtual support for our senior community um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, We have created in the 2021 budget a flexible COVID relief fund that will help Madison residents deal with the emerging issues as we navigate the social and economic fallout of the pandemic, including the increased threat of evictions that could come when the federal moratorium on evictions is lifted. Uh, We're also investing in uh, our homeless neighbors Uh, City and county staff have been working together to develop uh, long-term facilities that will serve folks who are currently without housing. And our budget includes $3 million for a long-awaited permanent men's shelter. And that amount is matched by the county in their budget. In the meantime, we are working to move our temporary shelter for um, homeless men from Warner Park to our vacant fleet building on First Street where we can accommodate more people. Um, I also want to highlight something that Norm mentioned, which is the uh, ACRE program. Um, I'm very excited about this and pleased that uh, for such a competitive program, we were able to uh, have five people from Madison accepted uh, into it. And I just want to... Uh, to congratulate um, and compliment those folks um, who were accepted. um, And they are Afra Smith, Jeff Ligon, Chris Canty, Austin Johnson, and uh, one of our own Team City members, Saren Oak, uh, who works for the City of Madison. So congratulations to all of you on being accepted into that program. We're looking forward to your progress. um, And I'm... Uh, definitely know we're going to hear more from these folks uh, after they complete the program and get to work here in Madison. Um, Speaking of the Senior Center, um, the Madison Senior Center and the Wisconsin Singers, uh, in a bit of good news, invite you to celebrate Giving Tuesday. Um, The Madison Senior Center and the UW-Madison Wisconsin Singers are partnering to celebrate the spirit of giving back with a free virtual performance on Tuesday, December 1st via Zoom starting at 1 p.m. You can find out more on the Senior Center's Facebook page. Um, This uh, performance was professionally recorded before the singers closed their season um, in mid-March. So no worries uh, when you see them close together on the screen. Um, But I invite you to take advantage of that um, free celebration on the Zooms. Finally, as we always do, I'll talk about community resources uh, for folks who uh, are 
homeless or in danger of losing housing, please call our housing helpline 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help with internet or phone service, please call the State Public Service Commission at 608 608- Two six seven three five nine five. If you need help accessing child care, please call Community Coordinated Child Care at 608-216-7022 um, to be connected to all of these uh, resources and more, including emergency food options. You can call the United Way of Dane County's 211 hotline. Uh, either by calling 211 or texting your zip code to 898 898- The city also provides a a free financial navigation resource uh, for folks that are struggling with financial issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic. The website for that is cityofmadison.com slash financial hotline, or you can call 608-315-5151 to sign up for an appointment. Uh, These resources and more are posted online at cityofmadison.com. There's a community resources link um, that you can click. Finally, upcoming meetings. um, Today, uh, Thursday, November 19th at noon, there is a task force on the structure of city government ad hoc final report implementation work group meeting. At 4, the Monona Terrace Community and Convention Center Board meets. Also at 4, Sustainable Madison Committee meets. At 4.30, the Police and Fire Commission will meet. At 5, the Equal Opportunities Commission has a meeting. At 5.30, the Downtown Coordinating Committee will meet. Also at 5, the Landlord-Tenant Issues Committee will meet. And at 6, the Body-Worn Camera Feasibility Review Committee will meet. On Monday, the 23rd, at noon, the Police and Fire Commission meets, and at 5.30, the Plan Commission will meet. On Wednesday, the 25th, at 8 a.m., there is a meeting of the Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District Commission, if that's your cup of tea. All of these meetings and more are listed on the city website, cityofmadison.com. They are all virtual meetings, and you can access uh, the links to them. You can see agendas and notes from previous meetings, and you can sign up to watch or to speak at any of these meetings, just visit cityofmadison.com and click on the meeting calendar link. That's the list for today. Thank you all uh, very much. I'm sure we have a few questions, um, but before I forget, I do want to say that we will not be doing a briefing on Thanksgiving, um, so uh, don't expect that, uh, but we will be back the week after that. And I'll see if Linda, if we have any questions. Yes, we do. We have one for the Director of uh, Public Health and one for yourself. All right, we'll start with Public Health. Good morning, Janelle. Good morning. Um, The Mayor touched on this already, but I wanted to read it in case you have more to add. With a recount happening in Dane County starting tomorrow, are you giving any guidance to election officials about how to do that safely, how close poll observers can get to poll workers, and whether everybody should be wearing a mask? Yeah, thank you for that question. I, the mayor did speak to this quite well before. You know, our, our city and county clerks supported and implemented uh, supported the implementation of very safe practices during our voting season this year. And uh, we have been and will continue to be in close contact. In fact, I'll be meeting uh, with our county colleagues on that in a little while today um, and have been uh, over the past couple days. But yes, masks will be required. Um, uh, distancing will be required, and they are doing a wonderful job to support safety uh, measures in that space. Thank you so much, Janelle. That's the question we have for you today. And the question for you, Mayor, is what do you plan to do with the voluntary time away program that the City Council approved? Is it different from what was included in the 2021 adopted budget? Do you plan to veto it? We're still consulting with the city attorney and HR on this, um, but I'll just reiterate again that the city attorney's opinion and mine is that um, this is within the executive branch purview 
to design and implement a furlough program. Honestly, if the City Council had wanted to prevent furloughs from happening, um, they should have found a way to close the $1.2 million budget hole that requires us uh, to have furloughs in the 2021 fiscal year. Um, but we certainly have heard the council loud and clear um, that they would prefer to have a voluntary option, um, and we are considering what that means going forward. Um, I will say that um, you know I think many other institutions in our community have had much more extensive furlough programs uh, even this year, um, and I'm really pleased that the city has been able to avoid furloughs in 2020. Um, it's obviously not anyone's desire to have furloughs in 2021 or going forward, um, but unfortunately the financial situation is such um, that we really have very few options. Um, we are working very hard to minimize the impact of furloughs both on individual employees um, and on um, the work of the city um, and the services that we provide to our residents. Um, so that's, it's an active uh, topic of discussion that we're working on. Thank you, Mayor. Those are our questions for today. All right. Well, thank you all again for tuning in to our briefing. Um, again, we're skipping next week, um, but we'll see you back in two weeks. And so I will say to everyone, please have a happy, but more importantly, have a safe Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you all. Take care.